Hi all, my name is Malika and today we have a great guest, Ricardo Osorio from Protein Capital, a Web3 focused venture capital. Thank you so much for coming, Ricardo. Thank you, Malika. How did you first become interested in crypto? I started in 2017, I think when in the like the second big cycle. Uh I think along with I think it, it, it was very much like a lot of people. I got interested uh, in the hype phase and uh, then it all crashed and uh, me along with it, right? So there was this initial phase of disappointment and I forget, ah, oh, this was all, this was all for nothing. But then um, during that bear market, I really started uh, getting uh, genuinely interested and doing, uh, doing the research and understanding I realized that I had no idea what I had invested in before, right? So, and I think that's a good thing about bear markets. They 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 help clean out all the you know all the noise, and uh, a lot of people go, but many stay and and actually learn right what the the purpose and uh, and all the, the features of the technology. And so this second cycle, uh, or the third, however you want to call it, um, from the 20, uh, 20, 2020 and 2021, um, I was very well prepared for that one. And that's when I started uh, going full time on Web3 and uh, and started the fund and later joined Protein Capital. And uh, it's been a ride ever since. Very interesting. Thank you so much, Ricardo. And uh, what do you think? What are the most promising areas within Web3 that you believe deserve VC attention? Okay, so... Well, I think the recent AI boom is going to be very good. Um, I think that the, the situation that we all saw with OpenAI has shown the, the problems of centralization. And I think that uh, this will fuel the need for decentralized storage and decentralized compute. And uh, so we're very excited about any 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 protocol that can offer decentralized storage or compute at competitive markets, at competitive prices to the market. Right. So, and also uh, the deep in sector, which is decentralized physical infrastructure, that's also very exciting. I mean, that can bring also a lot of boost, a lot of compute, and help with with censorship. So we think that's gonna be that the whole the whole storage and compute uh, sector is gonna be it's gonna do very very well. Um, also, zero knowledge proofs, zero knowledge uh, protocols help a lot in this. They are they, um, they can offer a lot of sophisticated compute off chain so that's uh that's very very interesting as well to us um ga gaming i think is also a very important uh, a very important sector because i think we like in the last in the last cycle we saw the potential of web3 gaming right but it was just like the tip of the iceberg they were not very well made games the gameplay was not good the the token economics were terrible. Um, they made like the initial gamers very wealthy, and, but then became unsustainable and uh, to the new entrants. And but I think it was uh, a good learning curve. And uh, the thing is also the games, uh, unlike most other uh, Web3 protocols, games require a lot of money and a lot of time to make. So I think that, and they have been building, right? So I think that uh, this next cycle we will see uh, a lot of good well-made games, triple A games with uh, much more mature and thought out token economics, right? They will have, they'll, they'll harness like real economies. And uh, and I think that's interesting, especially mostly because of the power of gaming to gain adoption, right? I mean, it is the largest in this entertainment industry there is. It is by far, it's, it's larger than film and music combined, right? So if there's something that can bring Web3 to the masses, it's gaming. So I think that's that's quite interesting. And DeFi, I mean, DeFi is always my favorite. I love DeFi. And I think we're also seeing like this next generation of protocols that uh, building on the, on the tools of the last cycle, on the plumbing, right? And creating more sophisticated protocols and more, also more mature tokenomics and, uh, you know, real yield uh, generating and uh, being able to, to share it you know, in a smarter way with, with token holders. So I think that's also, that's that, I mean, I think DeFi is also going to grow a lot. Yeah. Thank you so much for such an informative answer. Yeah. And uh, can you please explain the due diligence process for Web3 startups seeking investors funding, VCs funding? Yeah. I mean, it really, it really depends on the stage. 
they're at. If they're like a seed or pre-seed, then they really need to have a, a very well-made pitch deck that really explains uh, with detail the project. They really they should have a very a well-written white paper and but most importantly they need to have a team that really that can really convince a VC that they can make that vision come true because at that stage it's a leap of faith right I mean anyone can make a PowerPoint presentation you know so it's really it's really up to uh, having a strong team with a strong track record and being able to convince that they can achieve what they're saying because we're new we're new in the VC landscape right yeah. because okay so we we're a Web3 fund, but that we've been going on since 2021. But we've we we had a first fund that only always uh, invested in liquid tokens, right? So uh, right now we're just launching this new VC fund, which is um, more more focused on on, on venture capital. Uh, so that part is new to us but we partner with a larger uh, vc fund that has a, a long uh, trajectory in fintech so we have a lot of resources and uh, and experience in that in in that regard so but because we are uh relatively new we tend to look for projects that are a little more advanced so if it's a company we would expect to see revenues they don't have to be a break even but there has to be path to it, right? There has to be an, an, a trajectory that shows that that, that it can be achieved, right? And, and if it's a protocol, we would expect at least a, a testnet running or a, or a workable MVP. Could you please name your personal top three criteria for the project you would invest in? It has to bring something new. It has to be, it has to be innovative. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want just another text that, uh, or another NFT marketplace that does exactly the same as everyone else. So it has to have some, it has to have a secret sauce, right? Something that can convince me that it'll rise to the top. I mean, the competition is fierce out there. So you have to bring uh, new things as there are. There are many teams working on, on amazing things, but, uh, and you have to prove that you can not only bring that to the table, but be able to deal with uh, competition because, you know, something that is new today might not be new by the time it reaches the market, right? So you have to, you have to show that you have a, a competent team that can uh, put out new features and, uh, and, and deal with competition. And yeah. And uh, like I said, it's, it's mostly about the team. Also, we, we tend to prefer when there are other VCs involved, so we can share in the new, uh, share the due diligence, share opinions. Especially, like I said, because we are new in this space, right? So we do uh, want to have other like-minded VCs to to be able to share the, the information and be able to make a, a more informed decision. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Ricardo, how do you distinguish genuine Web3 innovations from mm -hmm. hype? Right. So, well, it, it can get, it can get very, very frothy. <laughs> it can get very frothy out there, uh, especially in the later stages of the bull run. So it really has to do with, with what they're bringing to, uh, to the market, right? So if it's something new, is there gonna, is there, it can, I mean, it can look amazing and uh, it can look amazing and uh, seem, and the team might, might be look, one, it might look wonderful and everything, but is this something that really uh, people users are really going to pay for this is it is it going to really be a demand for this that's like the most important thing and also i think um many many errors i think that also overhype many projects is you have to really place yourself in the in the adoption curve of web3 right because we we're not at mass adoption yet we will be i'm certain of it but we're not there yet and it takes time so if it's a project that requires a huge consumer base, right? And it requires your mother and my grandma to use uh, a Web3 wallet, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna work, not yet, right? So you really have to not, not overcomplicate things and, and look for projects that can offer uh, a product or a service that would be successful now that can survive with the with the actual user base and obviously as the user base grows it'll be even more successful but you can't count on having you know 10 million users um, from the get-go yeah totally and uh, what do you think what are the founders most common mistakes i would say well that one which i uh, which i just mentioned is is one um 
you know, uh, expecting to start with a with a large user base uh, when it's not usually the case. Another one that I see a lot is also uh, a very aggressive distribution of if if it's a token based uh, protocol, very aggressive distribution of tokens at, at the start to try to in a way buy adoption, you know, to um, to incentivize adoption because it's something that really hurts projects in the long run. Another another mistake can be the opposite of that, where they don't they they don't distribute enough tokens in the long run, have uh, too many allocate too many tokens allocated to the team and to advisors and to you know and um, because that also, in the end, the the idea uh, the, and the success that has come from from Web three projects is the community, and it is the the decentralized uh, distribution of the ownership of the protocol, and that's what really gets people interested and gets people involved. Sometimes people founders need to understand that this is uh, when you're talking about protocols, uh, you have you have to aim it, you have to focus it very different than you would a company, right? You have to understand that the idea of this is to decentralize and to be shared among many users. Totally, yeah, thank you. And Ricardo, have you ever invested in a project, crypto web through project that turned out to be a scam? Okay, no, so we, as as, we, as Protein Capital, no, we haven't. Me personally, as a personal investor, I I have had, not scams, okay, but I, have, I haven't fallen for scams, thankfully. I have I have had disappointments, right? Especially when, uh, when you have, because pr protocols, the idea, like I said, is that they decentralize, but they always begin centralized and they have a path towards decentralization. And during this time, they usually depend on a foundation, right? So it is at this time that it does behave much like a company. And that foundation can be a good and competent foundation or it can be a bad foundation. So sometimes you invest in great tech, very promising, and you think it'll do real well, but the foundation is not uh, good. It's not good enough for it. It does not know how to grow the ecosystem and it just it becomes irrelevant after a while. Yeah, thank you. And could you give us um, examples of, of Web3 investments that were particularly challenging and how they were handled? So we, we haven't had any, any challenges yet, um, but I think the, the last couple of years has shown us through through other VCs experience, right? Uh, the, the, ca the catastrophes that can happen, right? So I think we've learned uh, many lessons from cases like Celsius and BlockFi and, and FTX who, who received a lot of VC funding. And, uh, and we have learned how little accountability and, uh, you know, how, 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 what a lack of risk mitigation uh, could do to a project even if it if it, if it seemed at the time to be solid so i think uh, i think we we all as an industry have learned to be more more strict right with uh with that and, and be uh, a lot more incisive with our due diligence uh, not only at the beginning but also during the operation of the of the of the projects and be a lot more require a lot of more accountability and uh, could you tell us what excites you most about the future of web3 well, where do i start like i said i think I, well those those um, those sectors i told you i think uh, are going to be huge i think that even though mass adoption is not here i think that it is inevitable i think that the there are a couple of things that I have held us back. First of all, is how complicated it is. I understand uh, most people don't uh, don't understand this and be and they're over overwhelmed by it. And um, but I think that we have been moving a lot in terms of simplifying it. So things like account abstraction um, is going to help, uh, make, allowing people to to log in. With, a, with an email, as they're used to in Web2, it's gonna help a lot. Um, not having to word seed phrases, stuff like that. Being able to, to pay fees with the same token of a protocol. So you don't have to fund the wallet and then you know go to a, a centralized exchange and buy a, an asset and send it to a crypto wallet with a hash. It's, you know, it complicates that. So I think that pretty soon we're going to be able to have applications that you just um, download in your app, in your phone or in your 
in your PC and you and just log in with your email and we are able to pay with a credit card and start you know doing if it's a game or if it's DeFi or if it's whatever that's gonna help a lot and um, once most people see the you know the benefits and and the fun you can have like with games or or the the money you can make with DeFi I think it's gonna be it's a no-brainer I mean I think it's uh, definitely gonna I think this next cycle we're gonna see a lot more adoption overall not just not just uh, computer uh, focused people uh, and programmers and you know or finance focused people but more generally a- a- along the population yeah yeah thank you very interesting and the last question could you please give an advice for founders looking for funding so yeah i think that way what we spoke earlier um depending on, on the stage i mean but you really have to have um, a clear idea well written well described you know the team has to be convincing you have to show us why you right i mean we do get a lot of offers we do get a lot of pitches so it's really about why you right why do you think you can make this happen what are you going to be doing what are you what exactly what are you going to be doing with this funds and how is that going to make this vision come true okay so and uh and also the, the go to market part is especially important i mean it's not just the project okay great the, the, you have the project it works but how are you going to get this to a thousand users to ten thousand users right how what you, you need to have a plan for that already in place thank you thank you so much and uh thank you so much ricardo for your time for coming today i really enjoyed it a lot and Mm -hmm. i'm sure it's going to be very helpful and uh, informative for our listeners and for founders in general thank you so much thank you